Hello, my name is Matthew Raggett. I'm a, an educator, a teacher uh, and a writer who's worked around the world for 25 years in different types of international schools uh, and United World Colleges. And most recently, I was the headmaster of the Dune School in, uh, in Derridan. So I'm, I've made a, a career and a life out of working with children uh, and their learning. Um, encouraging them to follow their passions, to read, to learn, to think. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the, the value of reading and how important it is uh, that, that we work as parents to support and curate uh, what our children read and also to, to talk to them about it and to check in with them on their understanding and the opinions that they're developing through, through what they read. So I think that, that children develop a love of reading um, when they find things that either capture their imagination or that they can really identify with. And often that's, that story is about other children, uh, perhaps in other parts of the world, perhaps in, in, in places where we also live. Um, they need someone to, to curate their reading, to show them what might be great for them, uh, to look at next. And of course, in order to do that, that person needs to understand them, understand their hobbies, their interests, uh, and what makes them tick. And ideally, of course, if we're readers ourselves, then, then we're good for doing that job. But maybe we're not readers. And in that case, we need to try and develop a relationship with, with the librarian uh, or with the, with the child's English teacher at school to talk about what they could be reading and looking at. Libraries have always been the centre for learning. If you look back through the centuries, libraries were the foundation of collecting knowledge and understanding. And school librarians can be fantastic people uh, to help us know where to look and what to, what to do next. Uh, looking at different genres, looking at different writers, making connections between what we've been looking at or reading recently and what we might move on to. So I think that our children love reading with us when they're very small because when they're when they're babies and we pick up a board a picture book a board book it the, the physical contact that we have with them is just as important as whatever we're reading or looking at and then reading becomes part of a routine where we might do it during the day or where we might do it before they go to bed to to, to calm down to relax uh, and enjoy each other's company um it doesn't matter what language we're reading in to our children. So whatever we are most comfortable in and what we're most fluent with is going to be great for them. Um, and of course, we, we, we love it when our children begin to read independently, but we need to keep checking in with them because things like understanding and what meaning they're taking out of words, the nuances that may uh, be visible to us but may not be visible to them are all things that we can have conversations around and if we're reading to them and sharing what we're reading then we can have those conversations with them and they can grow their own ideas and opinions about what uh, about what it is that, that they're reading or we're reading together remember that education uh, is to teach children how to think not what to think so making sure that they're able to develop their own opinions matters. And I think it's really important that we don't stop reading to our children as soon as they're able to read independently. And of course, we must encourage them to read independently. And that's wonderful. It, it, it frees us, perhaps, from this nighttime uh, tyranny of m reading more and more. However... I think it's really important to keep reading all the way into their teenage years so that we continually check in with them on their thoughts, on their feelings, on, on what it is they're understanding about the world around them. And we don't have to keep reading stories to them. We can read pages from The Economist if that, if that rings our bell. We can read The Financial Times. We can read Time magazine. Uh, we, we can read anything that's available around us. But keep reading. They need to hear us being fluent readers uh, and we need to check in uh, with them on their ideas because as soon as we stop sharing that time with them, if we stop sharing our thoughts and ideas around what we're reading, someone else will fill that in. And it's always true that as our children enter teenagehood, their friends and their peer group become far more important to them than we are as parents and being accepted by them matters more. So... 
they'll fill their ideas with their peer group's ideas. They might fill their ideas with podcasts that come from YouTube or Facebook or, or you know, they'll be following influencers on TikTok. We want to make sure as parents that we're still there helping lead the thoughts that they have um, and helping them develop ideas that are strong, that stand up to criticism uh, and that can be tested against reality. And also we need to be able to ask them if they can see the counter example. You know, what's on the other side of that? Have you thought about this? Here's something that we can read. Uh, that, that will challenge that idea as well. So again, if we're not natural readers, we need an ally. That ally can be found in a librarian or a teacher that the student, that our child really connects with. Uh, make friends with those people, find out what they're reading. And also think about, you know, if we, if we follow a, a particular newspaper, if we follow a particular um, you know, magazine, make sure that we're reading something that will have different ideas as well. Uh, I know it's important if you're if you're reading one newspaper that you look at the other side uh, and that's something that we can help our children develop so that their ideas are you know critical and that they stand up to to, to being challenged and questioned uh, in a world of uh, of outrage and anger it's important that we can challenge each other's ideas in a way that's you know in a way that's agreeable uh, and and makes sense and isn't argumentative and full of anger so good luck um, keep reading Keep sharing your ideas with your children all the way through. And how do we know when to stop? Well, I don't think that we ever do, but we'll certainly have been successful when our children come back and say, you know, Papa, I think you should read this.